Okay, great. So we can share it with the team. Excellent. Um, yeah, so uh, congratulations. So I understand that you're the first ever manned multi-rotor copter in the world? <laughs> yes. That's pretty amazing. That's true. It was 2011. Yeah, saw your videos <coughs> with the sail uh, electric motor thing. And that thing, you also built your electric motor there? In the glider? Uh, no, not, not really. Um, uh, I, I built on the multi-copter. I, I use uh, standard um, RC model motors from, from Hacker, but uh, I modified them. And then I asked Hacker to, to build the modifications for me. Uh, but I, I built a lot of motors uh, within the last 10 years on, on my own, so I'm, I know how to build a motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, have you seen the... Let's see, where's your video here? I lost video. Oh, there you are. Okay. Um, yes. You stumbled into my YouTube channel, Caution Fuel. That's the reason why you're contacting me. Yes, I was looking for a bunch of time. I've, I've seen your stuff before off YouTube regarding electric motors. So electric motors is part of the curriculum you want to teach during our STEAM camp. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and we're looking for to build a dream team of teachers. Kind of like, it's kind of like Udacity except open source, actually. I was just reading about Udacity. Um, do you know their model? Mm -hmm. Um, not, not really. For I, example, I've heard about. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's it's somewhat relevant, but like for example, self-driving cars, Udacity is putting a course on that, and allowing only two hundred fifty people, but guaranteed that after you do this, you're going to get a job with us, with some of the partners. So, because mm -hmm. they're working on self-driving cars. So here, it's uh, it's a little different, but similar in that we're training people, like for one to work with OSE and the people who participate in uh, workshops to actually be capable of realistic product development. Uh, so that's, that's the background on it. But the idea is to, to fund open source product development by fun funding it by the events being both training and actual development events. And that's, that's where we're looking for instructors for that and content. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I wonder who's who's paying the bill. The cu the customers, they're, they're the students. So we're charging like okay. thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred for a nine day course. About three hundred of that is material. Three hundred to four hundred, about three hundred is going to be materials, and it's about a thousand dollars revenue after materials per student. We've run one. We already ran one. We had eighteen people, so we pulled in like eighteen thousand dollars here at our site. Right now we're saying, let's do this in multiple locations. Let's increase the talent. Uh, like, I'm done working on this by myself. Let's get the professionals involved. Like, you know, people like star, stars like yourself and everybody else. So we create a really powerful, powerful program. And it's also a way to fund, like, for the people that I'm inviting, I'm trying to focus on open source people who would like to do open source product development for a living. But, you mm -hmm. know, they're stuck with other jobs. So that's mm -hmm. kind of market uh, but it's on both yeah. levels like to train development talent and then mm -hmm. with the uh, instructors pretty much push forward open product design because every event will build upon like for example say we build the version one of the electric motor well it may not be a professional grade product but eventually we want to make it this uh, for distributed manufacturing and commercial grade next year part of the program is that we're planning to put put together we're working on this right now a 200 oh, let me close the window here. I'm in a CD eco home it's the open source modular building that we built uh, we're off-grid solar uh, but um, next year we're running a two hundred fifty thousand dollar challenge to build the world's first open source professional grade 3d printed cordless drill from trash uh, so the plastic recycling infrastructure is there too uh, we're it's going to be an incentive prize and the outcome of that we'd like to hire 50 to 100 of the people of the winners to hire or work with collab collaborators that produce the drills in different countries different cities and try to get that into the mainstream distribution channels so mm -hmm. that's uh, so basically for the first ever example show that open source product development is the way to go
that it's competitive. It, it develop, d delivers 10, 10x the value at, at lower cost. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the goal with that challenge. But, but part, of the people, part of the reason of the Steam Camp is to train people in the full open source development tool chains that enable people to CAD things up, prototype them, make motors, make electronics uh, that are required in these devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. have you seen, uh, have you looked at the career? Yeah, I, 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 like, I like the open source hardware idea very much. <laughs> so um, I, I did some minor contributions with my YouTube channel. Uh, of course, I, uh, I, I cannot show all that I know. Um, but, uh, but um, yeah. If somebody's interested uh, to to build um, motors or to build another good project is a, is a pedal generator. Mm. I really like uh, the, the pedal generator and um, yeah, all that stuff. And uh, I, I I like to share that to the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you be actually? Uh, it seems like you're 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 starting a company and you're way too busy, so you probably. Would you be able to participate in actually running a nine-day event? Uh, so wh where does it take place in the United States, I suppose? No, it's it's distributed in Germany. Where where are you closest to the biggest city? In Germany. Okay. Uh huh. Where's the biggest so, city closest to you? So so it's it's also uh, in German or in English or? It could be. Yeah, that's negotiable. You could do it in German because. As long okay. we have to collaborate on the curriculum, so you have to your part of the curriculum. You would have to present it in English because that's the language. Right now, of course, USA. We're looking at Belgium. We've got Austria with the Axiom Open Source Cinema people. We're trying to get them in there, um, okay. trying to get you. But basically, a bunch of the open source rock stars and others who are interested in collaborating. So different places. Like I, I'm aiming for about 12 locations for the first event. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's not only the um, the nine day camp. It's it's also some preparation. You have to prepare. Yeah. So, so for so the first I, event, it would be hard. But for the next quite, event, it would be better. Quite a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when, when does it uh, when does uh, does it start? Well, I mean, there's a three month development cycle for it. We're starting that cycle right now. Mm -hmm. So once we know we have the product, we put the announcement up with six weeks of lead time for people to sign up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, we'd love to see if how you can be involved in any way in this. Yeah. Uh, and maybe to, like to, when to run, at, at, at the moment, at the moment, I'm, I'm really busy with my new Evitro project. So we've just founded a new company. And so the next year, will be quite busy for me yeah but when when everything's done and then when when it's flying <clears throat> i uh, will have more time and so we we can uh keep contact and uh, maybe i can participate um, or join you um next year or in two okay. years i don't know yeah so i i am, I am interested but but not now okay yeah um let's see what part of it is interesting for you, Thomas? Which which aspects of the whole package, like what you've read, you you've seen my <laughs> TED talk and the, so, so what the what I can offer uh, uh, what what skills um, I, I have to offer or what do you mean? <clears throat> well, no, like what's I, I'm just trying to see like how you know just thinking about how how we can collaborate. But what what is most interesting to you about this program that that you've heard so far? In terms of like, I mean, is it about teaching, is it about the technology, your... collaboration, world <laughs> it, it was It was your home built tractor. <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's like once we get this program. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if, if you if you have seen it. I, I have also a permaculture um, farm uh, in La Palma. Oh, I did. So Canary that. Islands. So I, I spent. Um, Winter time, a couple of months. Normally, I, I spend on La Palma. So this winter, um, where is that? 
it's not possible for, for me to, to go there. But uh, I, am, I also like permaculture and gardening and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. I've seen your, your tractor and I said, wow, it's a great idea to, to build your own tractor. Yeah. Um, yeah, on, on the other hand, I, I have a lot of experience also with microcontrollers. Of course, I, I, I can do Ardu Arduino uh, programming. I can, yeah, all that electrical stuff, all that sensor technology and um, motors, electric drives, batteries, solar, solar power, wind power, all that stuff. I, I also have um, a farm on my permaculture farm. I'm completely uh, independent. I'm, I'm off grid. Oh, wow. Uh, tell me more about where the where is the location of your permaculture farm? Uh, La Palma's uh, Canary Islands. So uh, I have a website. I can please. Huh? It's a chat, chat function, but but you can also uh, Google for um, Perma Verde. You know Spanish? Perma Verde. Um, Perma Verde or Perma, like like permaculture. Perma. Perma. Okay. And, Verde, like green, like the color green, Verde, it's a Spanish okay. green. Permaverde.org. It's only in German, but you can use Google Translate. That's, so that's your, your farm there? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. And then I've, I've also there. built a house uh, with, with clay. Oh. With, with wood and clay, uh, you, you find some pictures on, yeah, see it. on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's where it comes oh, wow. to this is like I, I think uh, we have a very similar background. <laughs> oh, wow. we, we try to, to live a good life uh, with, with permaculture ideas in mind, and um, we are also interested in technology and uh, how to combine those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I like I what you're doing there. I saw your videos about the sol. I ran into the velomobiles and a solar velomobile. That was pretty yeah. interesting. I would love to do a, a velomobile or like a small car with a trailer, so it's a fully solar car. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing that at the moment. Uh, my next video will, about, uh, will be about my uh, solar trailer. I've built a um, two by one meter solar trailer with uh, up to 400 watts of solar power. Uh, is that enough to basically do a human hybrid vehicle? Like you can go that's yes. than ten? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about one that's that's literally like much bigger than that, like as big as a trailer. Uh, but just to show that, I mean, I, I'd love to do that myself, like to ride around on free energy, essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think there's great potential for solar velomobile type vehicles like a velomobile with mm -hmm. a pusher trailer is are you doing a velomobile in front of that it's also possible to have a, a pusher trailer uh, but uh, now i have an electric bicycle so the trailer is just for the solar cells but and uh, the future also as a camper so i can i can sleep inside yeah. the camper <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah uh is there any way um can you contribute any to the curriculum? Like, we'd like to see a, I don't know what you think, but maybe I can ask you about this. Axial flux brushless DC motor. So 3D printed. Uh, I've seen, have you seen this one by any chance? So this is, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I've seen some uh, YouTube videos uh, on um, 3D printed motors. I don't know what's his name. Uh, I'm looking at amazing DIY projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so there's this one. Let me point you to this one. But something like this, we'd like to do, except more 3D printed. So let me put a link. Where's the links mm -hmm. here? Let's see, where's this chat box? Oh, there's, there's one issue with um, with 3D printing. Uh, yeah. You're using. Uh, uh, thermal plastic material and yeah. the motor is getting really hot if you yeah. uh, if you have a good motor it's getting hot and this is not a good combination no so. it's not a not a good combination but um, can we do a so can you take a look at that link can we do a very efficient motor but still that's less energy dense but still very efficient so it doesn't get as hot 
so not super packed but a little bigger size but still very highly efficient like 80 plus 90 degree 90 percent efficient 80 90 percent efficient but it has less maybe less magnets and and not as much current uh, yeah, sure, it's possible. If, if weight is not an issue, you can build a really efficient motor if it is just big enough. Yeah, 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 that's what <coughs> I'd like to do. If, if yeah. it is big enough, uh, the, the heat heat dissipation is not a big issue. Then. And you still retain the efficiency beca because the efficiency is only as much as you're pushing the, the coils, which mm -hmm. you can, so you can have a good geometry where you're using all the energy in the coils, but they're just spaced mm -hmm. farther apart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I already made some designs. I didn't build a prototype yet because I have other things to do. But um, I have a design for actual flux motor. Um, Axial flux. Without without with uh, no actual flux motor Axial without any iron. So yeah. just just a coil. Yes. Um, I'm using. Uh, laser cut or CNC machined um, uh, fiberglass sheets to to hold everything yeah. together. Yeah. So not sweet printed because um, fiberglass sheets are more heat res resistant. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about a composite where we print 3D? So 3D printing is attractive because it gets you geometry. But if, what if we yeah. do that and then encapsulate it? Yeah, sure sure yeah mm -hmm. yeah so, so uh, you can you can use off the shelf um uh fiberglass sheets uh -huh. and if you have a, a, a small cnc machine it's nothing special uh, where you cut the wood and, and all this um you can also cut uh, fiberglass yeah um well the, I don't know if you looked into the detail of the curriculum, but we use our universal axis, a simple XYZ motion system, and when we make the motor, we use that motor, we develop that motor to be the CNC mill, so we can do yeah. things like that. So ideally, in the eventual workshops, so yeah, we can do either. We can do 3D print or we can mill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Sure. It's probably better than uh, using 3D printed parts on the motor. Yeah. Unless, what, what if you have peak... Or the high temperature plastics because we're designing printers right now that that can do the high temperature plastics like p okay yeah that would yep. work right or yep i think so. yeah it could work yeah yeah so yeah we're you know like we'll we'll do but, the but on, the, on, the, on the other hand you, you have some some heat um that comes from from the iron and from from the copper it, it's just heating up yeah. when you have a motor and you have to dissipate that heat. Yeah. Uh, so using using a good heat conductor is uh, is a good idea. And plastic is a poor heat conductor. So I, yeah, maybe ceramics would be a good heat conductor. It's oh. not electric, but it's hard yeah. to deal with. <laughs> Actually, we've got a pretty good guy on geopolymers joining the team. So yeah, we talked about things like making motors out of ceramics, high performance ceramics. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. That are also three D. Imagine that would be three D printable too. That would be, could be interesting, uh, depending yeah. on the application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you share your design of your your motor, the the axial flux? Do you have something you can send me? Um, yeah, I can I can send you. Uh, yeah, you want to have the, uh, want to have the complete step files or? Yeah, yeah. Step would work. We we use FreeCAD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can do it. Yeah, it's yeah. just... <laughs> yeah, so, um, how efficient do you th uh, is the motor that you designed? I don't know. What do you expect? Like, <laughs> I mean, it would be 80% plus, uh, right? I mean, uh, actually, a flux motor, I, I, cannot, I cannot make any simulations because uh, you need a 3D magnetic simulation tool. I'm just using two two D simulation and it's not possible to do that with actual flux motors. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't I don't know the electric uh, char characteristic of that. So well, normally I, I design it, I build a prototype and then I make some measurements. 
and then I I know what's going on there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's some stuff that is barely beginning for electromagnetics within FreeCAD, but yeah, that I think that needs work in FreeCAD. But yeah, mm. we, we can add that to FreeCAD eventually, as far as magnetic analysis. Um, yeah. So in the meantime, let's see. Um, um, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, so say you can share this motor, can you help us, like, maybe just maybe review some of the designs or help us design it a little, like, for the, for the workshop, or you're super busy or not really, or... Uh, if, if you send me something, uh, I, can, I can have a look on that and, and give you some comments. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the company you're trying to... It's not, not too much work for me, you know. Uh, yeah. If, if I should not redesign it or if, if I just give you some comments, uh, that's, that's fine. Yeah. As far as um, the company, so you're talking about the, the, man, the short distance commuter vehicle the aerial vehicle that you're working on right now, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Yep, I saw that. And, and how far, so you think... It, it does, it does not, I, I think it does not solve uh, uh, any of our problems uh, regarding um, uh, transportation, but uh, it's a nice nice thing to do at the moment. So I really like, uh, like uh, flying, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's also good to earn some money with, uh, with flying. <laughs> yeah, so th there's a market for short distance commuter Yes. Like that? Yes. I think there is a market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you've got a full team working on this. You, you're. you're no, it's a small team. It's a small team at the moment. We are six people working on that. Uh huh. And how are you funding that? Yeah, on my own and then with my partner. So it's it's our own money. And do you have any contracts lined up for who wants to actually have one of these when you when you do Not it? Not not yet, uh, but uh, we are looking for investors uh, once we have our first prototype finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. If you if you look at Volocopter, uh, we started uh, with with four people um, funding that that company, and and um, yeah, and now they they have big investment from from uh, Mercedes Benz, from Intel. Uh, they have hundred. 100 million um, dollars or euros in, in the company so, so they are growing big and I I left Volocopter three years ago but uh, yeah I I think I can do something better so it's a combination between an airplane and a, a multicopter oh so you're not talking about Volocopter that's that's now different that's a different guys now no, it's, it's not Volocopter so I, I have I am funding a new company, so but no, no things um, to, to look at oh, okay, at the okay. moment. Oh, I thought you were talking Everything. about developing helicopter. So this is going to be different okay. than it will be part airplane. You're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to get in contact with? I mean, all these people in Silicon Valley—they're like all over this kind of stuff. Have you con talked to any of those? Or yes, I've, I've been I've been to Silicon Valley a couple of times. Uh, yeah, I, I know Joby, Joe Ben David. He's also doing electric motors and uh, electric aircraft and all this stuff. Who who is that? Uh, Joe Ben David. Can you put uh, type that in the uh, chat box? Where is it? Where, I think where up, is it? upper uh, upper upper right. There's a chat. Upper. Ah, okay. Ah, no, I see your link. Okay. Uh, That's in the United Combin States. Oh, Joby, Joby Motors and Joby Aviation. And that's that's the people in the United doing that in the United States. Yes. Yes. He's um, in the Scotts Valley, like uh, nearby Santa Cruz. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you recommend any other people, like you know, because um, we're really trying to get people who can run the Steam Camp with us. But can you suggest anyone else who who can design an axial flux motor 
with us and, and be interested in running the camps? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe I know somebody in Germany, mm -hmm. but he's completely offline. <laughs> he has no oversight. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe I can, uh, yeah, I, I can bring you in contact. I, I will tell him about you, and if he's interested, he, he can he can call you, or he can write an email. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can do that. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Kotlerov. You, uh -huh. you, you don't you don't find him. So he's he's uh, he works for a company or he's got his own business or. Uh, he's he's a medical doctor. Um, oh, medical but doctor. He's, he's an inventor also and uh, interested in, in technical stuff. Huh. Okay. Maybe maybe he's he's interested. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And, and he's also. Very open-minded uh, inventor, and um, yeah, we we did our first motors together. Oh wow! So ten years ago. <laughs> Where, what city years are ago. you on in in Germany? Pardon? What city are you in? Where are you located? Uh, I'm I'm um, a little bit south uh, from Stuttgart. Okay. And he's around there too. No, he's he's more in the north. He's. He's at um, Bielefeld. At Bielefeld, okay. Yeah. Um, any other people in your numerous? Ex I mean, you're involved in the motor world of motors. Anyone else that comes to I mean, mind? I, I, know, I know some. I know some engineers um, at um, uh, Zero Zero Motorcycles. Uh, they have designed the the motors for for Zero. Um, but I don't think that they are interested um, because they, yeah, they, they earn their money with it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if you look at, uh, what's his name? Um, Luke Workman. He's also, he has a YouTube uh, channel, Luke Workman, maybe he, he could be interested in, you can, you can contact him. He's also in, in uh, Santa Cruz. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, Santa Cruz. Uh, YouTuber. Any other YouTubers that come to mind, or Luke? Yeah. I was looking for that. Uh... Is Luke Workman in Z Force Electric Zero Motorcycles? He he was he was one of the former engineers, but he's not at uh, zero anymore. So I don't know what he's doing at the moment. We last time we see is uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, and y you worked with Luke. Um, yeah, we've been working together on on the hoverboard project. You know the ha Hendo hoverboard? No, what is that? Uh, hoverboard. Uh, oh, ho hoverboard. Yeah. It's like like a like a um, hovering skateboard. Okay. Okay. You can look at Hendo Hendo hoverboard. The company is not not really active anymore. But but I I was I was a motor designer in that project. Are there any good forums or other? What's the best forum for people who do, where people who design electric motors can be found? Like, where else do I find motor designers? I mean, in Germany, there there has been a forum, uh, which is called Power Croco, but it's not not public anymore. So, um. 
but you can maybe you find some information about Power Crocus. It's a German German forum. Mm -hmm. Do you know any forums in the United States about that? Like any other international forums? Ah, uh, here I've I've got him. Okay, uh, Christoph Leimer. Chris yeah. Ah. Leimer. You, you know him? Uh, I know he the motor. Yeah. yeah. I don't know him. I. But I actually Chris. emailed him. No, wait, did I? No, I didn't email him. I, I should contact him. Yeah. Do you think he'd be yeah, open he, to a to an axial flux motor? Because he's doing his his own design. Yeah, I, I don't know. You can ask him. Um, but he he was the one I referred to uh, with a 3D printed motor. Yeah. 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 Um. I don't I don't know him in person. I just know his uh, YouTube channel. Right. But it seems like yeah. the seems like compared to his motor, the Axial Flux could be as good performance-wise and lower cost. Mhm. Mm yeah. Cuz we were looking initially at doing his, but it's I don't know, too complicated and we want to go, go simplest, coreless. That's another. That's another YouTube channel. Laser Saber. He's also doing a lot of DIY stuff, uh, and I think he also built some some motors on his own. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Can try him. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. Anyway, okay, so I think these are the people okay. Do any of the people from the Velomobile or those those kinds of people are they into do they know how to design motors? Oh um, I don't know. Okay, you haven't run so, into any. Yeah, Peter Kotarov. He's he's the one. He's also interested in velomobiles and, um, but yeah, in Germany. I don't know who's who's uh, building his own motors, so I'm I'm not sure about this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so yeah, yeah so we'll we'll see what can happen in the future um, if your time gets more liberated. But would you see yourself actually doing the the nine day events uh, along the lines of open source? I, I can I, I can imagine doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds sounds nice. interesting for me. So it's a good experience, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Well, thank you. Anything else comes to mind or? Oh, at the moment. Okay. It's, it's all, all for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Well. Well. Thank you for your time. And yeah, we'll be in touch. And and I'll see if. Yeah. See, please, please contact Peter and see if uh, he'd be interested, or if you think of any other people that might be interested in electric motor design. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you're especially uh, looking for somebody who's doing motor design. Yeah, because we. I mean, we can go about and prototype. You know, say, pl please send me your design. I mean, we can prototype it. But we'd like to have somebody who gives us the rapid training so we don't have to re reinvent everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of us bring together certain expertise so that the program can really come together <laughs> fast. Yeah. That will that'll be the ideal. Yeah. But, but, but your next, your next uh, camp will be in the United States. Well, no. We're saying in the 12 different locations at the same time. So we're also collaborating. Like we're, we're doing the events. Uh, yeah. And during the project days, we have four days of core skills and then five project days. And then five project days, we all share the designs and collaborate even remotely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and when when did you say, when is well, the next? Well, this will be late, late this year, early 2020, uh, about three months. Like we need three months. We're three months out at least. So in winter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, uh, 
so but but all the people have to come to to the camps uh, no so no it's not one so okay so the way some, it works to give some support uh, with with um with a video or uh, a skype chat or yes we will during the event we will be on on jitsi or video yeah. okay so we can collaborate with yeah, i mean if i if i don't if i don't have to prepare uh for that and uh, i i can i can join the group uh for an hour or two or uh, and, and discuss some details on the motor is it yeah. okay for me that'll be ideal uh, yeah if we can at least yeah get work on see, see your design and maybe you can contribute some feedback that would be great that would be that would be good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we can we can design we can start by designing it and yeah we have to put it together somehow <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but but what's the uh, um, what's the purpose of that motor? Normally, if I design a motor, it's for for special application. Well, everything we design is designed to be a construction set. So we'll do a basic prototype, but also during that process, build the knowledge of how to make it larger and smaller. The specific application right now is the mil milling function on our universal axis CNC. So f mm -hmm. start with that, then. If it works, we'd like to do it in, in power tools, cordless power tools, because we're doing that incentive challenge on a cordless drill that I mentioned. So that that would be the second application, and the third application. But, but is, I, I don't think I don't think that an actual flux motor is a good design uh, to to drive a power tool. Yeah, I, I think uh, the regular uh, actual flux motor with the size of the cylinder yeah. is much better than than the size of a pancake. Right, yeah. you're right about that. You're right, but we'll we'll try it. We'll try it. See what the limits are. I mean, yes, it's not optimized for that, but we're optimizing for product ecologies that you have you have a construction set that can perform as many different things as possible. So maybe mm -hmm. there's some larger power tool like a, like an earth auger that that might be you know like an auger that's perfectly fine okay. with a big pancake motor. But yes, I understand it's not optimized uh, for that. On the other hand, you always have some um requirements for 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 the rpm you have okay the voltage could be the same on all but but normally you have different rpm so you can have different winding for for uh, low speed high torque yeah or on the other hand you have a <clears throat> low torque and high speed motor yeah if you're years yeah the the you're saying the axial design lends itself well to that um or not really. So, so I, I would I would say if you have a pancake motor, normally that's designed for for higher torque. Yeah. And low RPM. But on the other hand, if you have a ironless design, it it will have higher speeds also. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. So I mean, part of it is educating people in the motor design theory. Our idea is that we're breaking people's limits of what they can mm -hmm. do. Uh, with their own hands and you know just getting really quality yeah. education so that we'll have the construction set we'll have the part libraries within FreeCAD we'll teach people basics about how to design this how to design the 3d mm -hmm. printing files and other techniques so it's about more about learning but with an intent that some of this will will have particular useful applications like possibly the mm -hmm. electric vehicle or the velomobile or something but we're just mm -hmm. trying to push the limits I mean, it's easy to do a crappy thing that doesn't really work, but mm -hmm. using the simple techniques, but I think it takes a really high skilled engineer to make the simple mm -hmm. techniques actually work well. And that's the kind mm -hmm. of approach we're taking. So take the very, mm -hmm. very simple techniques, but really engineer that well so that it's just more accessible to more people without having to go into the complexities that typical engineers do. Yes. That's, that's the kind of approach. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really about empowering people. And I mean, we believe. So in why, why, I'm why I'm laughing is, um, of course, you can build a motor, and your first motor will definitely work. Yeah. But, but then you discover, oh, uh, the efficiency is not as good as it should be, right. and all that stuff. And then you, you start going deeper into that. Right. And I've doing the. Ten, for 10 years now or 12 years now right and um yeah 
So, well, uh, but we do know. Okay, but you said we do know that if you don't care about the size of that pancake, then you're still okay for high efficiency, right? Yeah. So that'll be, sure. you know, that's one angle to approach it. Yeah. I mean, so we might not engineer it down to smaller size for power density, mm -hmm. but we might engineer it for power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, but you need some... It's it's good to have some uh, physical background on that and yep. uh, do some calculations on that. And if you're just guessing, uh, you don't know what you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I mean, we want to get, we want to start doing the numbers. And I'd like to see uh, the magnetic calculator in FreeCAD. That's that's you know, if we get somebody who's skilled in that area, we can have them collaborate on the FreeCAD aspect because FreeCAD is completely extensible. They do have mm -hmm. finite element modeling in FreeCAD already, okay. and thermal okay. some thermal stuff. I don't think there's much on magnetics, but people have talked about it. And it's if you know Python and if you know the science, you're mm -hmm. good to go. You can program up the simulator, so um, we can look into that. And there's yeah yeah. I mean already, for example, there is full open source fluid mechanics that that's accessible in FreeCAD. Uh, by yes, integration, yes, with, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so to extend it to magnetics, I think it would be a next step that we can contribute to, and then mm -hmm. get those higher level tools into the hands of everybody, and mm -hmm. then teach people mm -hmm. about that. So that that's the idea, just to really raise the bar on what's uh, really the transparency of learning, like rapid learning. Mm -hmm. That's what we're after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, well, thank you. So we'll be in touch. Please send that motor and uh, pass that info on to Peter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will do that. Okay. Well, thank you and, and good luck with changing mobility with the first manned multi rotors. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Martin.